Now let's set up the shot in Solaris using all the USD files that we created earlier. So here's the desktop uh, with all the pieces that we are used to. So we're going to create a LOP network here. Uh, and that's where we're going to set up the shot. So we're going to call this uh, destruction underscore stage. So there is a, sta a slash stage up above, but we're going to do it here so that this can be more easily packaged up if needed and shared with other people. Good for sort of a production tip. We're going to go to the Solaris desktop, which is going to have a different sort of look. It goes to that top level stage, but we're going to go down to the object level and into the destruction stage here. And this is where we're going to set things up. So we're going to do the display options and set the background to dark, uh, just so that the elements look, you know, a background, a dark backgrounds, what's going to render. So it's good to have that while we set things up. We're going to put a reference node down uh, and we can use the file pattern to go to dollar hip, USD, and we're going to go static bomb and accept. And there it is sitting in the scene. So we're, the universal scene description language is, uh, you know, it, it can be rendered directly to Karma. And uh, setting uh, objects up uh, here in the um, in Solaris adds them to the scene graph, uh, which is the final description that will will be used to render. Now, as we do this, we can set up where it is in the scene graph. So the primitive path is slash geo slash dollar OS. So you can see there it is as a piece of geometry. So you can organize your uh, scene graph um, as you bring different pieces of geometry in. Uh, now we're going to go and alt drag to create a second copy of this. Alt drag a third, alt drag a fourth, and we're going to just rename these. So we're exploding bomb, and then we're going to go ground, and then we're going to go fuse. So all the sort of geometry elements, uh, we're going to bring, we're going to sort those out right now. And ultimately, to see those in Solaris, you actually have to merge them. So they're not going to be visible unless you do a merge on that. So the exploding bomb, we're going to go and get that geometry. So that's quick and easy. Uh, now, currently, both exist, but we'll sort that out in a second. We're going to go and get the ground surface. Bring that into the scene. And the fuse. It's a little bit up there, except... Now you don't see that um, unless we scrub back, and then you can see there's the fuse and then the explosion. Now right now the two bombs exist, the, the exploding one and the static, and we can deal with that using something called a prune node. So we're going to put the prune node after the static bomb and give it some rules as to when do we want to see this one. Well, we want to see this so it $F is less than 200. So uh, well, actually, it shows up after 200. Sorry, so we want to go F dollar F is greater than 200. Then as we we see it, we see it, and then when it's greater than 200, it gets pruned out. So that's that's the, what we wanted there. Now we can take that same prune node and just um, alt drag to make a second copy, place that behind the exploding bomb. In this case, we want to do dollar F is less than 2 less than 199 I think yeah there we go so there's no gap between them so we go through there and then boom we kick into the exploding one so we've got a nice transition between those two and that can be done here in the Solaris context once we have that uh, we can do a scene import which we're going to use uh, this to bring in cameras so we're going to plug that in, and any cameras we have at the object level are now going to be here. So there's cam 1, which we can look through, and it's exactly set up the way that we had it before and ready to go. So you can, you don't have to store things. We could have tried to store this camera on disk, but in ca instead we actually brought it over directly into the scene graph here in Solaris. Um, now we can do some more references for other elements in our scene. So the first one we're going to do is the sparks. And we'll just call those sparks. 
and we can do the other effects elements as well. Now in this case here, uh, the difference is where do we want to put these in the scene graph? So, well, let's go and do the soot. The soot trail. And the sparks. We want to do dollar hip, so we have lo local references. So, USD uh, sparks. So you see that gives us a much cleaner reference there. Uh, which it makes our scene more portable if we want to share it. Now we're going to merge those together. And this is sort of our effect stream. And ultimately that can be fed uh, into the other merge. And so if we go here, you see there's the soot, there's the sparks, uh, and then the exploding bomb. So we're getting all the different elements that we needed. Now. The other thing we can do is put a prune in uh, for these elements because theoretically uh, once the explosion happens we don't really want to see them anymore. So uh, once it's less than 189 um, we'll go through and we'll cut it out. Uh, sorry, greater than, greater than 199. Um, so once we get up to 199 these things will disappear and we're good to go. Now we're going to add what's called a material library, and the material library uh, allows us to add materials that we're going to use uh, for this shot. So we open up the material library part here, and we're going to put in a principled material here, and that's going to be what we're going to use for most of our materials. We're going to dive into the material library here, and there it is, and we're going to just call this the bomb mat and we can make a material for each of the elements that we need to render so we can have them as unique. So alt drag to get a second copy, third copy, and a fourth copy. So the second one we're going to call the fuse uh, mat, then we're going to have the soot or the sparks mat, and then we're going to have the soot mat. To get these to work, we need to assign them. So we're going to use a separate node to do the assigning called Assign Material Node. We're going to put that down, feed in the material library, and then we can start making assignments. And that comes from, you know, uh, let's bring our exploding bomb uh, as the primitive, and let's bring the material from here, which is bomb mat. And we bring that ready to go. Now we're not going to see anything in, in that right now because we haven't added any material qualities, uh, but we can slowly start going and, and dealing with all of these. So we can go and do the, the sparks. Um, actually, the sparks, we want to do this a little differently, which is um, the primitive path. We're going to go at slash fx slash dollar os. So it's just going to take the name from there. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing for here. So slash fx sl uh, slash dollar os. And then that will, uh, oh, dollar os. And then that will put them in the right place. So when we go back to this node, uh, we'll have an effects area here. We'll have the geo area and the effects area. And we can organize things accordingly. So we're going to put the uh, static bomb and the bomb material for that. Uh, we're also going to do the soot mat and the sparks mat. And then plug the appropriate geometry from the effects section into above. So the primitives for that and the primitives for that sparks. Now, what we also want to do is bring over this concrete um, material, and we're going to use that for the ground. So we can go uh, back to here, and if we just add one more in here, we can say, get me the ground, and get me the concrete material, and drag that into there. 
So everything is getting assigned accordingly. Now the concrete already has some material qualities to it, so it's ready to go, um, but we probably want to uh, explore the other materials. Now to get a feel for that, um, rather than use this sort of GL view of things, uh, what we want to do is do some rendering. And so we're going to go tab light. It's always good to have a, a good light in here. And we're just going to take that and move that up. And actually what we want to do is we'll just leave that there, move that over to the side. But we can use some tools here in the, the light node uh, to set that up if we want. So let's first set the sort of intensity, 50, and that creates a nice light just off to the side here. And we can turn on high quality lighting to get a sense of where the shadow is. Maybe that shadow is a little long. So what we do instead is we can use the shadow uh, tool here where we click there and then we shift click to place the second point down. And now we can play, you can see we can control the look of the shadow, the look of the bomb, uh, and how the light is affecting that. Um, we has a, also have options to push um, hotkeys to push the light back a little bit. Uh, if we go to Karma, we can get a sense of what that looks like rendered right now. Uh, the ground uh, surface is a little little bumpier than we thought. We can probably tone that down. Um, and we can start to add more material qualities to the other elements. And we can also add on the denoiser, which will have things resolved just a little bit quicker. If we go to the concrete and we go to displacement, uh, we can see that there is a scale there, which we can pare that down to maybe 0 0.01. And that looks a little bit better for that material. Um, or maybe 0 0.05, that's, that's even better. Now we can go to the bomb material and first thing we're going to do is just tinker with the light a little bit here and if we press the control key we can move the distance back a little bit and get that uh, light out of the way a little bit. So now we're going to go to the light and we're just going to change the intensity of that to um, let's make it a, a hundred so it seems a little darker which is fine because there may be 500 but we're going to feel some illumination from the pyro explosion so we don't want this to get we don't, we don't want this scene to be too light we want it to have a little bit of shadow and darkness to it but anyway 800 seems to do the job so now that we have that we go back to our material palette click on the bomb material and let's set the properties for that so we're going to make it dark so it's going to be a black color certainly don't want it shiny so let's increase the roughness to 0.7, and that sort of um, diff diffuses uh, that a little bit, so we're not feeling it too much. And we're going to uh, enable some displacement, or, or rather a noise displacement, which of course at first creates a crazy rock-like um, shape, but we can tone that down a fair bit. Uh, we're going to go alligator noise, and let's do the frequency of 30, 30, 30, and let's do an amplitude of 0 0.01 and there we go so we get a nice little bit of bump on that shape uh, but not too much and of course this is taking advantage of the UVs that we built earlier to spread the texture around the surface properly um, set the roughness there as well and then that's pretty much good to go um, for the sparks Okay, we're trying to, I think we meant this to be the fuse, but we actually clicked on the spark, so that's not what we want. Let's click on the fuse. Uh, we're not going to use point color so we don't get the yellow coming through on that, uh, but we'll go with the dark gray there. For the sparks, um, we actually want to do this a little differently. So, we'll come back to that. Let's do the soot. Um, that's also a dark gray. Now we go back to the sparks, and in this case, we're going to change the color to white. So we want them to punch out. As a matter of fact, we want them to go even further, but to have some emission. So we're going to change this to white as well. 
and we can start to see it shine a little bit. And then we're going to say use point color. And by using point color, uh, we'll, we'll take some of the reds and oranges that we had in there and have that pump up and the, uh, increase the intensity to 10. Use the point color and you can start to see those oranges and yellows uh, coming into play. We'll see that better when we get more of a, a final rendering of that. So with the Karma in the viewport, we're able to create and preview our materials and get a quick sense of uh, how are they affecting the scene or the shot, are they doing what they need to do, uh, and then make ch changes accordingly. So the Solaris Context is great for that. Now we're going to go Tab um, Karma, and this puts down nodes specifically designed for render output. So the render settings, um, as well as the USD render ROP, which deals with um, saving files to disk and so on. So the render settings, uh, you can do things like make sure you got the right camera for if you're going to render out. Uh, you can do your render resolution here. We'll leave it at 1280. Um, you've got settings for primary samples and secondary samples. So we can take primary samples up to 32 to get a higher quality rendering. You could bump it even further if you wanted to get rid of more noise. Uh, we can also go to the filters and use the optics denoiser to help as well. And these uh, render settings will be used to render disk and also work in the viewport.